Hey, it's Aton. I'm here on Highland right across from the Hollywood Bowl. It is a uh, slightly rainy Sunday afternoon. And I am here not to hang out with this historic asphalt, but because of the Lasky DeMille barn right behind me. Now, this uh, is a film lover's mecca. This is the only structure that's surviving from Hollywood's earliest phases of development in the early 1900s. The land that this barn originally stood on was owned by Data and Harvey Wilcox. Uh, they're the namesakes of Wilcox Avenue. And they came out in the 1880s from Kansas and bought a whole bunch of land. Now, Harvey died in 1894, Data remarried, and she and her husband did a whole lot of work expanding uh, Hollywood's population, uh, parceling off the land. They donated land to uh, churches and schools and libraries, and also invited a whole lot of interesting, sophisticated people to come along and invest in the area. So one of the people that they attracted was named Colonel Northam. He was sort of a gentleman farmer, very interested in horse breeding. And so he bought a parcel of land from the Wilcoxes uh, just south of Hollywood in between Ivar and Vine. And uh, he lived on that land and also built the original barn in 1901, uh, just east of Vine. Now a gentleman named Jacob Stern, he was a merchant by trade, he bought the property from Colonel Northam in 1904. And it was a really interesting time for Hollywood. So it had incorporated as a city just the year before, and it was starting to attract some interest from the film industry. Uh, they had originally set up uh, downtown, but uh, the early film pioneers decided that they needed a little bit more land. They wanted to buy up some property where there weren't as many people, and uh, there was more real estate available for their large productions. End of 1913, Jesse Lasky, who was a major film producer, and Cecil B. DeMille, who was a uh, stage director. They came out, scouted the area, and decided that uh, Stern's property was perfect for uh, filming some of their new films. They leased the barn on December 24, 1913, and five days later, DeMille and producer Oscar Apfel started shooting the first ever Hollywood film, The Squaw Man. This panoramic photo is from the first day of shooting. They bought the barn outright by February, and by the end of 1914 owned the entire block. Now the Squaw Man was a huge hit. On a budget of something like 40 to 50 grand, it made about 250 grand. So immediately they became major players in the film business. And within a few years, they had merged with one of their competitors, Adolf Zucker's famous players, um, and also a distributor, Paramount Pictures. Now in 1926, the new famous players Lasky company had uh, expanded so much, they bought up a lot of the land around the original barn that they needed to move somewhere else. So they expanded to their current site, and that's the Paramount lot, right on Melrose in between Gower and Van Ness. They brought the barn along with them. Uh, Cecil B. DeMille, uh, you know, directed his very first picture there, and he had a sentimental attachment to it. When Paramount started making uh, talkies, they needed a soundstage, so they put the soundstage where the barn used to be, and they moved the barn elsewhere on the lot. Soon it was incorporated into their western set, uh, so it was used for a lot of films and TV shows that had western themes, including uh, the Rainmaker movie, and also from the late 50s through the 60s, it was incorporated into the set for Bonanza. So in 1979, Paramount decided to donate the barn to the community. And uh, for a few years, it was sitting in the parking lot right behind Capitol Studios, just kind of hanging out, decaying. Uh, but in 1983, after they transferred ownership to the Hollywood Heritage Foundation, who uh, mines it right now, it was moved again to where it is right now in this parking lot across from the Hollywood Bowl. So not only do they preserve the structure, but it is a really amazing museum on the inside. They have a lot of rotating exhibits with uh, costumes and props and, and historic photos from all the eras of Hollywood. There's uh, stuff related to Cecil B. DeMille's career. A lot of the um, original furniture is there, including this little trash can that Cecil B. DeMille would use in the early days 
uh, back when it was still used as a farm. So they would hose down the floors and he would kick up his legs on the trash can uh, so that he didn't get his nice shoes wet. Now, all the exterior walls are original. Uh, a lot of the interior is also original. Um, they've added uh, decks and porches and such during some adaptive reuse phases uh, so that you can see what it would have looked like at different phases in uh, the building's long history. Anyone who is at all a lover of filmmaking and Los Angeles history, get your butts out here. Thanks for doing LA with me.